Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're looking at the top five plants for wound healing. This is going to be scientifically based, and I will say there may be some plants that are better than these top five ones, but we're looking at ones that have good scientific research behind them on humans, not just like rodents and Petri dishes. So yeah, good old YouTube list video, and I will say that this was largely inspired also by ancient people and indigenous populations having these amazing plant remedies or in a movie where somebody gets a gash and they just like chew up some plants and shove it in there to heal them. So we're gonna look at what cultures actually used each of these top five plants. And we also have some honorable mentions and dishonorable mentions as well. Dishonor on you? Dishonor on your cow? Yeah, those plants that have a lot of pop culture pizzazz behind them for wound healing but weren't able to perform in the scientific literature. So yeah, this idea of plant-based sort of poultices or salves used on wounds, super evident in pop culture. Obviously these were used by indigenous cultures and it goes back even further than that. We have reasonable evidence that Neanderthals 60,000 years ago were also doing this from their fossilized dental plaques. We can find medicinal plants that they wouldn't be eating for calorie purposes. So scientists at least speculate that they were chewing them up to be treating wounds, which is a little less far-fetched when you realize that recently the first orangutan was seen doing this exact thing. And then he continued chewing but stopped swallowing and put the plant sap from his mouth precisely onto the wound using um, a plant, a potent medical plant in order to treat his wounds. We're gonna get right to that list starting with number five, which is yarrow, which is actually one of the plants that was found in the mouth of those Neanderthals. Yarrow is also known as soldier's wound wart. Wart is in W-O-R-T, like mugwort, liverwort, etc. And I wholeheartedly believe that if we had more human research on this, we would show even more benefits. But this is one that was used all over. It was used not just by indigenous Americans, but also by indigenous Europeans, as well as in Chinese medicine. Let's get to the first randomized control trial. And I will say that a lot of these studies are on people with some type of ulcer, like diabetic ulcers or wounds that have issues healing. And this is a study out of Serbia on venous leg ulcers. And to sum it up, well, the ulcer wound area started out roughly the same. By the end, the control group's ulcers were still at nearly 40,000 cubic millimeters, while the Yarrow group had gone all the way down to just 27,000. So we're talking about a third better in terms of that final result. All right, now the next human study here is interesting, where they just had people volunteer to have their skin irritated, and then they gave different treatments and saw how it went. And the Yarrow resulted in significant anti-inflammatory activity, positive impact on on skin hydration and balanced pH better. And then we have a third study. It's the only rodent including study that I have in there, but that's because it's also a study on bacteria. In particular, they exposed it to staph, which is really the main wound infection risk in a Petri dish, so also a Petri dish study. They found that, yeah, it had antibacterial activity. Of course, it helped with the wounds of rats as well, but you know we're not focusing on animal studies here. And that brings me to how I wanna be talking about mechanism for each one of these, at least for a second. And that brings me to this really important chart, which is really just the stages of wound healing. And we have that inflammatory phase. And so if we can bring that down, then we can accelerate the whole healing process. And every single plant that we're going to look at does that. So I figured I'd mention it now. And the antibacterial effects are from the compounds camphor as well as eucalyptol. And then we also have some bleeding reduction effects here, which are from vasoconstriction, as well as another wild thing that I didn't realize, tannins, which are in various plants. Some of these plants are able to actually help you form a protective layer on the wound, which is wild. Anyway, let's get to number four, which is plantain. We're not talking about the plantains that look like bananas. We're talking about plantago major. This is one where a while back, I anecdotally heard that cows after they give birth go straight to plantain patches and eat the plantain to allegedly heal. And then this is another one that was used in indigenous American populations as well as European populations. And this is where we're starting to hit some of the higher quality science. We have a randomized controlled trial of 160 people who had pressure ulcers, which are what you get in the hospital from being in bed too long, being immobilized. And this is not just a double blind study, this is a triple blind study. <laughs> not to be confused with the three blind mice. Oh, lame joke. No, we're talking about a situation in which 
none of the researchers at any of the stages of the study actually knew who the subjects were or weren't. So there could be no bias. And at the end of the study, the intervention group had about a 95% recovery of their ulcers, while the placebo group had about a 70%. We have another randomized control trial here that used that Plantago or plantain extract in the form of a gel on people with diabetic ulcers on their feet. And the results were quite astounding at one week. We're talking about a 65 point reduction in wound size at one week for the plantain group compared with just a 33% reduction in wound size. That is basically twice the reduction in wound size, which is incredible. And the plantain group had three times the rate of full wound healing by the end of that study, which is incredible. But not all results are gonna be super dramatic. We have another randomized control trial here on plantain and it looked at burns. So maybe there's a different effect between burns and sort of cuts or ulcers. And the results here were better, but they weren't as dramatic. We're talking about complete healing duration of burns being about 11.7 days in the plantain group and 13 days in the control group. So not even statistically significant. So perhaps for burns, not as effective for whatever reason. And for mechanism, again, we're talking about various anti-inflammatory compounds accelerating the process as well as those tannins again. So really similar here. And they also have other astringent compounds that help form a protective layer over the wound. Now for number three, we're moving right along to Centella. You might remember, I recently mentioned Centella in my collagen video because it's added to some collagen products because it can boost certain skin regeneration aspects. It's also known as go-to cola. You know I'm gonna make a bad joke. Yes, my go-to cola is actually that Stevia soda cola. Not Coca-Cola, anyway. All right, our first randomized control trial is on people who got acne treatment in the form of laser resurfacing. And then what they did is split their face in half like Harvey Dent. And then they gave the centella to one side and then a placebo to the other. And I'll just say from this chart, the texture index is what stuck out to me. That centella group is doing way better than placebo there. But from the findings, we're talking about centella leading to less redness or inflammation. And then also, you know, less crusting at certain times and also better general wound appearance at certain times. So generally good result. Quick shout out to today's sponsor, Fatty15, which is a cellular health and longevity supplement that is vegan. We're talking about a fatty acid here, which helps strengthen cells. We have a study that essentially compared it to other anti-aging supplements slash drugs like omega-3s in the form of DHA, as well as rapamycin. And I found that Fatty15 works on a larger range of cellular pathways than those. And another finding I thought was particularly cool is from this randomized control trial, the people who were given Fatty15 had higher levels of hemoglobin at the end of the study, which again, indicates better cell health. And another randomized trial from last year found that not only did it lower LDL or bad cholesterol, but also had beneficial shifts in the gut microbiome. So cool stuff, I've been taking it, feeling good. And if you would like to try it, you could of course click the link below and use the code Mike, and that'll give you 15% off your first subscription order. All right, back to the list. And this is where we gotta think, you know, not all plants are created equal for each type of wound or each goal. And one issue here, of course, is scarring from wounds, but this has been studied in that area with good results. This study looked at people who just had surgery to fix their carpal tunnel issues, and they found better scarring scores in that intervention group at three to six months. Their quick dash functional score in particular was much better. We're talking about 28 for the Centella group, but only 18 for that placebo group. So again, like a third better. And then we have this study on irregular lacerations, quite interesting. And they had a bunch of different results at 60 days. Scar dimensions were significantly smaller in that Centella group. How protrusive the scar was better. Pain levels were even better, which is rare for these. And they also had a better scar redness score. But we can move on to another randomized control trial asking, is this even gonna make wounds heal fast? Well, you know, maybe a slight bit. We have this study looking at centella extract on acute wounds. And while some other metrics were better, really the average healing recovery times were just 4.6 and 4.87 days. So we're talking about like a few hours better and not statistically significant. So what could be the mechanisms here? We have an entire review on this subject and they say that we have different active comp, like those asiaticocytes, et cetera, which engage collagen synthesis, modulate inflammation and offer antioxidant protection. Centella might help through improved angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood cells. And that might be from that stimulating effect, yes, on collagen, but also on some other factors like fibroblast growth factor and vascular endothelial 
endothelial growth factor. All right, now we can move on to number two here, which is calendula. You've probably seen it around in gardens, nice little flowers, and they actually do get an extract from the flower itself. This is one that was mainly used in ancient medicine by people in the European and Mediterranean specific areas. It was definitely a better way to say that. Anyway, let's get to the first randomized control trial where they had hand wound healing tests and they found that calendula extract versus mineral oil resulted in a faster healing speed for calendula. Talking about 9.5 days versus 6.2 days, which is great. And then we also have epithelization, which is where you get that first layer of cells sort of starting your skin regrowth over a wound. And it did much better in terms of that. Reaching it in just eight and a half days while control took about 13 days. So dang, that is solid. And that's cool because we can see that proliferation phase where we get that epithelium going and then and we have that remodeling phase with collagen after that. So we got different plants doing different things. Anyway, we have another study here, which is also a randomized control trial on oral calendula. Does it work? Well, yeah, the oral calendula group had a better BLAT score. Yep, you know what that means. <laughs> it's the Bates-Jensen wound assessment tool. Anyway, the, the score was about 23 versus 38 for that placebo group. So we're talking again about around a third improvement. Seems to be a pretty patternist here. That's also not how you say things. Now we have a very impressive study, another randomized control trial on ulcer healing with calendula. And the result was, I crap you not directly from the study, a fourfold increase in the speed of healing which is wild, that's the only word I got. And in terms of the mechanisms, we really have a lot here. We have collagen boosting, we have inflammation reduction, we have antimicrobial, et cetera. All right, we're gonna get to number one here in a second, but I've got two honorable mentions for each category, being good and being bad. First, the good honorable mention here is Sphagnum moss, which you might have heard about. It was discovered in the late 1800s by a peat moss person who had like a severe arm fracture. I don't know if they just shoved it in there or whatever, but they found that it helped. And since then it's been used in wars basically as gauze. I'd really love to see more studies on it, but I think it's a sort of clotting, bleeding stopping effect as well as an antimicrobial effect. So that's pretty solid. And then also antimicrobial, we have tea tree. Not a ton of studies on this, but we do have this randomized control trial on people people in nursing home that had these persistent wounds that wouldn't heal that had MRSA in it. So we're talking about staph that is antibiotic resistant. And they say, quote, in the tea tree oil group, all chronic wounds that had previously been delayed in healing were healed within 28 days without adverse reactions. And MRSA was also eradicated in nearly 90% of the wounds in the tea tree group. All right, now we have honorable mention for overhyped. And I know some people are really not gonna like hearing this and I was actually surprised as well, but Arnica in terms of bruising, and we're talking about a wound, even though it's internal, well, all of the studies pretty much are showing absolutely nothing, I'm sorry. And a lot of this has to do with how it's generally a homeopathic remedy in which they dilute it like a thousand times. So just in terms of there really being enough of these plant compounds, to do what they need to do, get where they need to get, uh, not gonna happen. That doesn't mean it won't help you. It's just not gonna help you more than placebo according to study after study after study after study. <laughs> All right, now let's get to number one. Perhaps the king here, at least in one area, was used not only in ancient Egyptian, African, and Middle Eastern medicine, and that is aloe vera. The healing ability here is pretty wild, and I have talked about this in the past, but more data has come out since I covered like my five amazing effects of plants video seven years ago, eight years ago. And this is where it's good to have more data because you get a clearer picture. Because we did have some studies out there being like, yeah, we're talking about like 10 days faster burn healing time, which is like, holy crap, that is insane. But now we have a sort of review meta-analysis of nine randomized control trials, six on healing time in particular, 2024 study. And combining all those studies together, they found about a four day reduction time in healing for second degree burns. But the weird thing about the randomized control trial results, no improvement in pain. And maybe it's just psychological for me, but I know when I'm putting aloe vera on some type of burn or sunburn or whatever, it's feeling better. So all science must be wrong. But I wanted to look past burns and see how it could do. Is it effective in other areas such as 
skin grafts, which is what the next study is on. We're talking about people that literally donate a patch of their skin to people that need skin grafts for things like burns and other issues, which is, you know, really good on them. And the way they did this study was really fascinating because they took that skin graft area and they broke it into two different rectangular areas, one of which was given aloe vera gel and the other was given a placebo gel, randomly choosing which patch was which for people. And if you're squeamish, I got a little bit of a gross image coming up in three Three, two, one. Yeah, placebo is on the left and aloe is on the right. And wow, the difference is there in my opinion. Um, okay, image gone for people who are squeamish. And while it didn't do quite as good as burns in terms of healing, it still knocked two days off of healing time, which is also incredible. So how the heck is it even possible? What's the mechanism here? Well, we have this study mentioning that allosin is the active ingredient which modulates various pathways that promote fibroblast, keratinocyte migration, collagen deposition, and new blood cell formation. And I wanted to keep the Petri dish studies to a minimum, but this is just fascinating from this one. Quote, keratinocytes in the growth media with both the preservatives and aloe vera had dramatically higher viability than cells in the control media without aloe vera. So aloe vera actually helped the cells survive. So in the wound, area in terms of burns, this seems to be king and also pretty good in terms of general wounds. So when I inevitably see that movie scene in so many different movies where they're chewing up those plants to stuff in the wound, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be like, that's that's legit. I mean, I guess it depends on what plant it is, but <laughs> no, but it's probably helping to an extent. But lightning fast, I did do a dive into whether or not saliva helps with these wounds. So we have to look at that really quick. Unfortunately, we don't have studies applying saliva directly to wounds. Oh yeah, we do have studies. Yeah, licking your wounds in the lab actually has a lot of research behind it. I wouldn't go ahead and lick a giant open gash. And of course, this is also probably a function of oral health as well. If somebody has really bad oral health, it's probably not gonna turn out well. But yeah, really fast saliva promotes wound healing by accelerating blood clotting, delivering proteins and peptides that stimulate cell migration and proliferation. We're talking about histatins, which are small peptides found in saliva that stimulate wound closure by enhancing cell migration and spreading. There are some other growth factors and saliva has tissue factor as well, which could help with some clotting. Although, you know, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Now we have other modern medicine that I would say is safer. So in the end, it seems like I could do a whole nother video ranking plants based off the type of wound as well, whether it's a burn, a laceration, or whether we're talking about stopping bleeding. We got winners in all the different areas. And of course the moss honorable mention as just like gauze is awesome. And then also the ability to maybe clot things faster for various plants is cool. Then we have the antimicrobial effects of other ones, the scarring benefit of centella and on and on. And in almost all of these instances, it appears that ancient peoples were using them for the same thing, which is pretty cool. How did they figure that out? You know, maybe it was trial and error, but I do have to say, don't get me wrong, a lot of quote unquote ancient wisdom is absolute baloney. I mean, people taking ground up mummy powder for like erectile dysfunction and things like that, or taking pangolins and grinding up their scales for the same. It's always erectile dysfunction. Let's be honest, it's always erectile dysfunction when it's wrong. But this is why I found this so fascinating because it's the intersection of use by ancient or indigenous people, even potentially Neanderthals 60,000 years ago and science showing how well it works and that it works. But next time I get a little cut, I'm gonna lick it. I said it, I'm gonna lick my next cut. Are you gonna lick your next cut? Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you would like to try Fatty15, elevate those cells, you can just click the link below and use the code Mike for 15% off your first subscription order. All right, feel free to like, subscribe, even share the video if you want, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.